Hello, hello, it's Eli here. Uh, thanks for joining me again. I'm super appreciative that you're able to join me again. This is uh, going to look at the warp transform tool. I use this tool excessively. If you're a true Photoshopper, you love this tool because um, we use warp to, manip to actually manipulate images in, in the most literal sense. So, um, let's go over the various parameters. Um, obviously, you know, you can make someone smile a little bit if they're not smiling enough in a photo. That's what it's uh, probably... Be subtle, don't overdo it is the real key. Um, but, you know, you can uh, move different parts of the image. You can, um, you can kind of make them, you know push the eyebrows up, change their emotion, make them look like they're crying if they... Um, there's, a, there's a bunch of t options here, but before I get into the warp transform um, methods, I'm going to go into some of the properties and parameters here. The hardness dictates how hard the brush is. This is super handy when you're using Warp Transform for, for a few reasons. If it's at the bottom, it will only affect the center of that brush. So have a look at this. It's not really affecting other areas, only the area where I moved in the center of it. However, if I go all the way up, then it moves a big chunk of it. And you may think, all right, well, I'll probably never use that, but you, you, you actually do. Because if you want to, for example, you can use it to select only parts of an image. So I just moved the entire eye without touching the eyebrow, for example. And that's because I put the um, hardness up high because I wanted the higher the higher the hardness, the more the the more area it covers of the circle. If I did 100% here, then it would literally just move the entire circle. And we don't want that because you, you want a little bit to, to remain um, smoothed out on the edges so that you can't see that harsh edge. Okay, that's what that is. Super handy to use in, in various um, circumstances. Strength, of course, is the strength, um, you know, um, you can kind of make it look like a joker because it's... Uh, or you can go to zero, near zero, and it hardly changes anything. It's very subtle. So that's just how much power you want behind this um, this tool. Interpolation. If you do none, the image, the warp will appear quite um, pixelated and rough. For example, if I do that and I zoom in, you can see. Um, there's not not much not much has been smoothed out and it's quite jagged um, in, a, in, a, in its um, in its warping. However, if I do select one of these algorithms, then it helps me smooth it out to various levels. So if I do actually li linear somewhere in the middle, but if I go to the low halo and apply that, right now I'm going to apply it. I haven't pressed enter yet. When you press enter, it applies it. You can see the smoothness that it has applied. It's no longer got those um, extreme jagged edges. Okay, so that's what that does. Um, you can you can create animation. Like if, if you're going to, um, it'll create layers of animation if you, let's say you moved, um, you know, you let's say I made someone smile as such. I could say, all right, we'll create 10 frames of that so I could see the person slowly smiling. I'm going to do a little bit more realistically than that. There you go. Okay, create animation. It's rendering a number of frames. Okay, so it's slowly, there you go, a number of frames, slowly smiling more and more and more and more and more. And if you want to see that um, properly animated, then this is if you're creating GIF files and things like that, but um, filters, animation, playback, Playback will allow the um, press play. There you go. Okay, so if you're ever creating those sorts of animations, 
but we're not. I, don't, I think that's kind of um, beyond the scope of this little tutorial. Okay, the warp transform the various functions. Move, we've just seen how move works. It lets you move various parts of the image. Grow will grow an area. Now again, the the hardness, if we're, we want to, let's say we want to capture the majority of this eye, but not touch the eyebrow. Okay, we're making the eye grow. Okay, so you can do that. So that's how you make uh, eyes bigger. Or, um, you know, let's increase the, <laughs> the size of the nose or whatever it might be. Um, shrink is the opposite, of course. So you can see what that does. Um, so shrink is the opposite. Swirl clockwise will swirl it as such. Um, if you make it, if you make the strength small, not strength, sorry, if you make the hardness smaller, then it will affect the center more. And if you want it to be a tighter um, swirl, then just make the size smaller as well. And that way it kind of swirls the center point more. Okay. Um, let's uh, swirl counterclockwise. We'll do the exact opposite. Erase warping will... Both erase warping and smooth warping will basically un undo the changes. Although I, I think smooth warping will kind of make it a little bit more... A little bit more real. Okay, so you can keep undoing it until it's restored to its original state, if you wish. Um, so super handy, yeah. I hope that explains the uh, warp tool. You can see why um, this is such a handy feature in both Photoshop and GIMP. Really, Photoshopping would not be the same without this tool. It is one of the most important tools to help you achieve really interesting manipulations. Thank you for watching and uh, I hope to see you next time.